This is the complete updated Adobe Rush tutorial, updated to include all the latest features since our last Rush tutorial, so that you can learn how to edit videos with Adobe Premiere Rush step-by-step -step in just a few minutes. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video, where we help you grow an audience and scale your revenue with online video. If you're seeing value in this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. It really makes a big difference. And all the links to everything I mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. So let's jump into it. So Adobe Premiere Rush is an awesome, truly cross-platform video editing app from Adobe, offering a seamless experience to edit your videos down across multiple devices with support for all the major platforms, including Windows, PC, Mac, iPhone, iPad, iOS, and Android. So that means that you can shoot your videos on your iPhone or your Android mobile, and you can start editing on the go with your phone or with your tablet. And then you can finish up over on your Windows or your Mac computer when you get home. Or you can even start your editing on your computer and continue editing on your mobile on the way to work. So it really is an amazing program. And in this video, we're gonna do a full tutorial and walkthrough taking you through step-by-step -step exactly how to edit videos with Rush, our favorite features to improve your video editing workflows, and how to use Rush like a pro. So we're gonna be following the primal video editing process to help you reduce rework and save time as we go. So stick around to the end and I'll link you to a downloadable version that you can print out and you can follow along next time you're editing. Now for this tutorial, I'm gonna be taking you through using an iPad, but the process is exactly the same no matter which device or computer you are using. The only difference will be if you are on a phone that the icons or all the buttons are along the bottom instead of on the sides, but the icons and everything are exactly the same. So it's gonna be really easy for you to follow along no matter which device you're using. So the first thing you wanna do is to click this create a new project button in the middle to create a new project. So we're gonna come up here to videos and we're gonna select our primary video footage, which is this one here, nine minutes, 10. We'll tap on that to select that clip. We wanna come down the bottom here to project name and give this project a name. Let's call it Justin Edit. And then you wanna come across this little settings wheel on the right hand side. Press on that to select the format of the video you're gonna be creating. Now this is something that you can change later. So we're gonna start off here with a 16 by nine or widescreen video, but let's say that later we wanna repurpose it for Instagram stories or a nine by 16 portrait video. We can come back and we can swap this out and Rush does an amazing job at reformatting all of our video clips so that it fits on the different formats. So I'll cover that one a little later on. So we're gonna select 16 by nine widescreen and we're gonna go okay. Now the last thing I wanna make you aware of on this page is down the bottom left hand corner, we've got checked sync with Creative Cloud. Now if you're only gonna edit on this one device and you're not gonna edit and switch between different devices or different computers with your edit, then you won't need to have this one ticked. But if you do want your project synced to the Adobe Cloud so that you can use it across multiple devices, then make sure that is ticked. So we selected our primary video footage, we've got a project name. Now we just wanna hit create down the bottom corner. It'll go through and quickly prepare our media so that we can edit it down. And here we are in the Adobe Rush primary editing interface. So I'll give you a quick rundown on where everything is and then we can jump into the actual editing. Up in the top right hand corner, we've got our upload progress bar. So you can see that little blue circle that's filling out. That is our clips that we've told Adobe that we wanna synchronize our clips up to the cloud. So that's showing us the progress of our uploads. Next to that is our redo and undo button. If we make any mistakes and wanna undo or redo, Next to that is where you can submit a feature request or you could report a bug with the app. And then the layout of these buttons here is where it's a little bit different on smartphones. So I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. But the first one here is where you can add in all of your graphics and motion graphics and stuff. The next one is your effects panel where we've got all of our transitions and all of that fun stuff. Below that is our color grading tools. So we've got presets, and all of our controls to dial in the look and feel of our video. Below that is our speed control to speed up and slow down our video clips. Under that is our audio for all of our volume levels and audio enhancements and filters and those sorts of things. And below that is the transform panel where we can crop and rotate and make those sort of basic edits to our clips. That's a great freeze frame that we're looking at there. I don't know if that one's any better. Let's leave it on that one. But this image that we're seeing, the big image at the top is our playback monitor or preview monitor. Where we're able to see what we're actually editing. And below that, we've got all of our controls to take us back to the start of our clip or even jump across to the end of our clip as well. Let's go back to the start. So the next one across from that is our reformat tool. This is where we can change up our project if we wanna do a portrait version or a four by five 
or even a one by one. This is where we can reformat our video projects. And again, I'll dive into this one more a little bit later on. Let's go back to 16 by nine. Now on a device with a larger screen, you can grab this little handle on the right hand side here and move it up and down to adjust how big your timeline is versus your playback monitor. And then this big area down the bottom here is our timeline, which is where all our editing is gonna take place. Across on the left hand side, we've got our scissors to make a cut. We can duplicate a clip with the next button. We've got our trash can to delete a clip. We can press the next button here to expand the audio waveforms or the visual representation of our audio so that that's bigger. So if you're gonna be editing videos with a lot of spoken pieces in it, then using the audio waveforms, you can quickly see when you're speaking and when you're not. It's gonna make the editing a lot quicker. The button below that will switch to a more traditional timeline view. You can see we've got different layers in here as you would see in applications like Adobe Premiere Pro. Now this is where I normally like to leave it, but if you want a cleaner interface or a simpler interface, you can turn that back off. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that one on. And the last tool down the bottom here is your multi-select tool. So if we've got multiple clips and the timeline that you wanna select, then that's what that tool does. Now if you wanna see all of our project assets and video files and things that we've added into this project, that's what this little button up here does. And if we press it again, it disappears. And if we wanna import anything into our timeline, media, we wanna capture a video on our device, create graphics, audio, or voiceover, that's all done under that plus button. And if we wanna go back to the home screen, then we just press the little home button in the top left-hand corner. So we're gonna go ahead now and reopen this up and let's jump into editing this down. Okay, so we're gonna have primary video footage in, in the timeline here. We can pinch to zoom on the screen to zoom in and out. We can tap and swipe across to scrub through our footage. And if we've got multiple clips in the timeline here, we can tap and hold on the clips and we can pick them up and move them around or change the order of them. But we're gonna start off here by trimming down our primary footage and removing all of the bad takes or any of the mistakes. So we're gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna come back across to the start and I'm gonna find where we actually want this video to start. So to do this, as with any video editing application or app, there's a couple of different ways that you can do it. We can scrub across here and find the piece where I actually nail the intro. It's unlikely it was the first go, so let's just say that this is where I did nail it and we want the video to start here. We can just come across and press the pair of scissors here on the left to cut our clips in two at this point. You can see now we have a left clip and a right clip. With the left clip selected, the one that we don't want, we can just press the trash can and that is removed. So that's one way that we can do it. I'll just hit undo in the top corner here and undo again. Another way that we can trim our clips down instead is to grab this yellow or orange handle, the thick bit on the left or the right hand side of our clips. So if I go ahead and tap and hold on that and drag across to the right, then we're actually changing the start time of that clip. So I can start it just about here, right where I start talking. And when I let go, our clip is now gonna start at that point. So we've now got our video starting at the right point. Let's come across to the end of our video and let's do the same with the end. So find the piece where we want our clip to stop. We can just grab that end handle and swipe that across and our video is now gonna finish at that point. And likewise, if we wanna remove a bad take in the middle, let's say I made a mistake here, we can again just use the scissors to slice out footage at that point. Let's remove this bad take in the middle here, this section here. Let's come back over here and add in another cut, let's say here. And we wanna remove this section in the middle, we can just press the trash can and that clip is removed and the gap is closed up. So you wanna go through now and remove any of the bad takes, any of the mistakes in your footage so that you're just left with all of the good stuff. And obviously you can use a mix of these two methods as well. Okay, so now that we've removed all the bad takes, all the mistakes, I'm gonna zoom out. And the next step is to import any B-roll or overlay footage that we wanna use in our video. Now I'm also gonna switch back to the more advanced view. I just personally like it better and I also think it better represents this next step to show you how it all works. Now we're gonna come across to the end of our video here so that we're importing our clips to the very end. And you wanna come up to the top left-hand corner to the blue plus button and we're gonna add in some media some other files. Now I've got three video files here that we're gonna use in this project. I'm gonna select all three and hit add, and those will be added into our video right at the end. So if we zoom out a little bit here, we can see we've got those clips in the timeline, and maybe we'll just adjust this playback area here by just pressing and dragging down the side here, just so our playback monitor is a little bit bigger. So with these three clips at the end, we can actually pick them up and we can move them on top of our video track so that 
while I'm still speaking underneath, we're now gonna see these clips playing over the top. Now these are just like every other video clip. If we zoom in on them, we get a bit more control, but you also have those orange handles on the side. So it's just a matter of selecting from these clips the pieces that we want to use. So let's just say we want the start of this one here where the movement starts, comes into focus, keeps panning back, and let's say we wanna finish it about here. With that clip selected, we're gonna come and press the scissors to split our clip at that point, and then we can just remove the second piece there by pressing the trash can. So we now have me talking on screen here, and then we cut to this shot of the switch pod and a phone, and then back to me talking. So we do the same with this next clip here. Let's find the piece of this clip that we want. So I think in this shot, we have two attempts at Caleb putting the tripod down. I think I missed the first one. So we're gonna start this clip around here. So I can grab that left handle and I can slide it back to that point. So our clip's now gonna start there. And we can just hit play and play through till around there somewhere. So we can, again, add the scissors, select the second part of the clip there that we don't want and hit the trash can to remove it. So you wanna go ahead now and bring in all of your B-roll or overlay footage, trim it down and then pick it up and move it to where you wanna have it in your edit. Now don't worry about remembering all these different steps and what order to do it in. You can download a copy of this process ready for you to use in Rush or any editing software at the end of the video once we wrap up this tutorial. So if we come back to the start, the next step then is to add in any text or titles into your videos. So for this, you can either come up to the plus and add in graphics, or you can come across to the graphics tab here and select add graphic. They'll both do the same thing. Now there's lots of templates and presets and stuff that you got access to in here. Just under titles, you can see that we've got a button here for more. And there's a lot more in here that you can bring in and use in your projects and obviously customize up as well. So we're gonna back out of this here and we're just gonna pick a basic title. Let's pick this first one here. Now we can select on it and drag it down into our timeline and then that title appears. Now to edit that title, we just need to double tap on it down in the timeline and then the panel will appear where we can edit this up. As you can see, we've got two items here for the two lines of text, one for title, one for subtitle. So we'll select on title and double tap on it in our playback window. And down the bottom, you can see that we've got editable text now. So we can type in Justin Brown. We can change the font here. Uh, let's find Oswald, our primal video font. And we can change this to bold. We can change the size of this text on screen. So let's make it a little bit smaller. We can adjust the character spacing. So you can really dial this in to match your branding. And we can change the color, we can change the outline and all of that fun stuff down the bottom here too. So that's looking pretty good. Let's go back and let's actually remove this second piece of text because we're not gonna need it. So let's double tap on it. Let's just delete the text out of it and we're gonna leave that one as blank. So the text, just for this title, let's have it as Justin Brown. Now with that title selected, let's say that we wanna move it down to the bottom because it's currently covering my face. We wanna come across to the transform panel and then we can grab the vertical position and we can move that down. Likewise, if we wanna move it across a little bit, we can use the horizontal position to position this title where we'd like it. Now titles will behave just the same as any other clips. If we wanna change where the title starts and finishes, we can again tap on it and press and hold and move it to where we want it to appear. We can also zoom in and lengthen or shorten the amount of time that it's actually on screen. So if we want it to finish around here, then we can make it that long. So it's me talking at the start, title appears until here where it disappears. Now this title that we picked was just a basic title. There are transition graphics, there's overlays, there's animated text and titles in here as well. So lots of cool stuff that you can easily add into your videos. So you wanna go ahead and add in all of your text or titles throughout your videos in this step. And then next up, we're gonna be adding in any effects or transitions onto our videos. So let's say that for instance, when our B-roll clip here just appears, we might wanna have some sort of flash or effect that happens at that point. So it's not just a hard cut between me talking and this clip appearing. So let's select this top clip here, our B-roll. We wanna come over here to the effects window. And then in here, we can just select which transitions we want. So if we select the first one here, this is like a cross dissolve. The next one here is a dip to black. So you can see that as this happens, it fades out of one and then back from black. We've also got a dip to white. So this is more like a camera flash. It'll dip to white and then back. Now we can adjust how long that effect or that transition is going to go for. You can see this little slider at the top here, duration. We can shorten that down. So 0.31 seconds 
if we play through that, it's gonna be a quick little flash and then that's gonna be shown on screen. So it's really easy to go through and add in transitions and those sorts of things into your clips just to add a little bit more polish. But I will say don't go overboard with some of these wipes and slides and things because you could quickly make your video look rather tacky. Now the other place that we like to add some sort of effect is where we've got a hard cut in our primary video footage. So if I've made a mistake and we've had to make an edit, instead of just having a hard jump cut between, what we'll normally do in this case is to zoom in on one of the clips just a little bit to make it look like we've actually changed up the shot a little bit or changed up the camera angle even a little bit. So let's come back to the start here and I'll show you what I mean. So we've got our first clip here of me talking and then there is a cut here. So instead of having that little jarring cut, Let's select that clip. Let's go over to the transform panel. Let's come down here to scale and let's increase that a little bit. Now I'd say don't go too far with this. Depending on how you've shot it, you could actually be losing a little bit of quality, but just a minor shot change can add a next level of polish to your videos and break it up and make it more interesting for your viewers, all while hiding some of your mistakes as well. So this second clip now is zoomed in. So if we scrub through the first one and then jump to the second, you can see that it's slightly zoomed in. Now one way to really sell this effect is just to make sure that you're keeping your eyes in the same position. See how they're not quite lined up at the moment, it's a little jarring. So if we come back to this second one that we're adjusting here, let's move the position so that our eyes are a little closer at lining up. So something like that. It's a little less jarring and looks a bit more professional. Do you wanna go through now, add in any effects, any transitions, or any of those zoom cuts or jump cuts to all of your footage in your timeline? So when that step's done, the next step is to import any music that you wanna have into your video. So you wanna come back up to the plus again. Now in here, there is a button for audio. So in here, there are some tracks and some sound effects and things that you can use in your videos that are included with Adobe Rush, but I would strongly recommend that instead of using these, you're actually purchasing and licensing your music from places like Artlist and Epidemic Sound. Those are our top two picks and where we get all of our music and sound effects because they make managing the licensing thing much, much easier and you're much less likely to get caught out with not having the correct license for where your videos are going if you're using a dedicated service. And again, we've got links if you wanna check those out down in the description box below. So instead of coming into this audio panel, I'm gonna press plus and I'm gonna choose media because I've already transferred over a couple of music tracks onto my device here. So I'm gonna choose files, I'm gonna choose import from files and navigate through to where I had copied these over. So I'll pick this one here and then we just need to hit add down the bottom it's gonna go ahead and bring that into our editing project. And again, just like any other clip, we can tap on it, we can pick it up, we can move it around. We've got those handles on the start and on the end if we wanna make adjustments to our clip. So in this case here, we could shorten it down so that it finishes when our video finishes. We can split and remove sections just as you would with any other video clip too. So undo that cut, we don't need a cut in that. But now that you've got your music files in, now's a good time to go back through and play through your video in its entirety. And you might find that you're making minor adjustments to maybe make some edits or some cuts to the beat or tighten up your edit based on how it feels and how it flows with the music in there. So all of this should be an iterative process where you're just going through, you might be swapping some of the clips around, you might be making minor tweaks and adjustments just to dial in that edit. Now that we've got our music tracks in, it's now time to adjust our audio levels. And this is something that Adobe Rush makes really, really simple. So we're gonna come back across to our first clip here in our timeline, our first piece of primary footage. We wanna select that, and we wanna come across to our audio panel, just pressing the little audio button there on the right. Now in here, we have the ability to either increase the volume by grabbing this little slider on clip volume up or down, depending on how loud or quiet the original file is. So we can either do this on an individual clip by clip basis, as I've shown you here just with one clip selected. But if we wanna do this across all of our primary footage, let's just back out of this now. We can come down to the bottom left-hand corner to this arrow select tool, clip select tool, and we can tap on all the different clips in our timeline that we wanna make these audio adjustments to, which is all of our primary footage here. Then we come over to the audio panel. And in here now, when we make an adjustment, it's going to flow through to all of the different clips that we have selected. So really powerful. But one of the more powerful features inside of Rush is under this advanced drop-down panel. And in here, you can see that it's already classified that primary video footage as voice. You can see we can change the type manually from voice to music or other. So it's already classified it as someone speaking. So in here, all we really need to do is select this little checkbox here, auto volume, 
and that's gonna go ahead and automatically set the volume level based on this being someone speaking. So it's gonna set it to the correct audio level for us. And there's also some cool stuff in here like being able to reduce the echo or even reduce background noise if you're filming in a windy environment or something. You've got some awesome features like that in here too. So in terms of setting the volume level now on our primary core video footage, that's already done. Now we're gonna adjust the volume on our music. So we're gonna turn off that multi-clip select tool and we're just gonna select our music clip here. And again, we've got our basic controls to increase or to lower the volume. Typically in a video like this, you would have the music volume much lower so that you can hear everything that's been said. But again, under that advanced drop down menu, you can see that this is classified automatically our music as music. And again, we can select auto volume and that's going to lower that down so you're still able to hear it, but it's not gonna interfere or it's not going to overpower the spoken pieces in this video. And in my experience, this actually does a really good job. And there's also one other really cool feature here, auto duck or auto ducking. And this is where it's automatically gonna go through in any areas where, say in this video, where I stop speaking. So you've got spoken pieces and then you've got pieces with no talking. It's gonna boost the music volume up for those quiet sections and then lower it back down automatically once I start talking again. So it's a cool feature, but it's not something I really use too often. So I'm gonna turn that one back off. So now that we've got our volume levels sorted, the next step is to color grade or fix the colors in our video. So you wanna come back to the first clip and make sure that is selected. Then instead of being on the audio panel, we wanna come up to the color panel. Now in here, there is a ton of presets as well. So think of these like Instagram filters. You've got things like cinematic, film, uh, Kodak, Fuji, so lots of presets and things in here. Obviously, if you find something that matches the look that you're after, by all means, start with that or use that. But you can also come across then to the edit panel and you can customize these up and really tweak and really dial in the settings that you want. So I'm gonna go back to presets. I'm gonna go none, so we're just back at our raw original footage. And I'm gonna go across to edit. And we're gonna do some basic color correction on this. So the first place I would say to start is with this exposure slider. You wanna either brighten or darken your shot using this one first. Then you wanna adjust the contrast slider next to add a bit more contrast or take it away if there's too much contrast in your shot. From there, I'd say to come down to color temperature and you wanna adjust this one. You can see if we move it to the left, we're adding more blue. If we add it to the right, we're adding more yellow or orange or more warmth into our shot. So we wanna dial in our color temperature here, our white balance and correct any issues from when we might've been filming. And then I like to jump down to the vibrance and add a little bit of that. You can see that if we add a lot, I look a little sunburnt, but really just boosting some of the colors in the shot here. Obviously, if we go the other way, we're going black and white. So back to middle and then just up a little bit, and that's looking pretty good. So if we turn that off now, this is what it looked like before, and this is what it looks like after, just from tweaking a few of those settings. Now, obviously, we just set this on this first clip here. So what we can do is we can come up to these three little dots here and press on that, and let's choose Create Preset. We can give it a name. Let's call it JB. Hit Save. And now for the next clip, if we wanna apply that exact same color grade or those same settings, we can come over to presets and we can choose your presets and we've got the JB one listed there. So both of these two clips here now are set up exactly the same. So we can just go through then and apply that preset to any of the clips that we want that on. And likewise with any of our B-roll or overlay footage as well, we can go in and tweak the colors on those two. So you wanna go through now and do any color grading or any color adjustments on your video. So once that's done, your video is complete. Now to share this out or to save it out, you just wanna come up the top to share. And usually what I find here is that the default settings are usually pretty good. They're based off the settings that you've used in your primary footage that you've been editing in your timeline. But if you wanna customize things up, you can come over here to quality settings. And instead of just leaving this set to automatic, you can actually choose some other presets in here as well. So I'd suggest just leaving this on automatic and then you just hit export and your video will save out. Now there's a couple other quick things I wanna show you back here on the edit tab. One of them that I've mentioned a couple of times already, let's say that now that we've finished this video, we wanna make a version for IGTV or a portrait version. We just come back up to this switch format button and let's switch our project to nine by 16. And what you'll find then is Rush has done a pretty good job of reformatting our video automatically to fit in this new format. It's scaled everything up for us. You will wanna go through and make minor adjustments to things like the title there. Now it looks pretty small. So we wanna select that title, come over to the transform button and we can scale that one up. And we might even wanna move it up a little bit. 
and likewise we'll come across to any clips that we did make an adjustment to so this one here was one that we zoomed in on so we can again adjust the position of that and zoom in a little bit on this one and reposition it so you can go through manually really quickly and just make sure everything is positioned the way that you'd like. Now there's a cool new feature in here for this as well where it will automatically auto reframe your shots for you. So let's just take this B-roll clip at the top here and let's come across and enable it for this clip. It's gonna automatically reframe that shot for us. So with that clip selected, we wanna come across to our effects, come down the bottom to auto reframe and turn that on and it's gonna go through and analyze our clip and reposition it and adjust the framing for us. Now this works really well when there is a face on there. It will do its best to keep the face in the middle of the frame and make sure it's not cropped out. But if you do find that you need to make any adjustments, you can just press adjust frame and you can manually reposition this and it will then go back through and reanalyze your clip. So let's just try it here on this little clip here where I'm off to the left. Let's select on that, let's turn on auto reframe so you can see straight away it's moved me into the center of the frame and let's have a look really closely. It's also going to reposition the frame as I move my head around. So you can see the background here moving a little bit as well whereas my head is staying in the same position. So you can actually reframe and reposition and animate that movement seamlessly in your videos all based on what's happening in there. So this is an amazing feature. And again, once you're happy with that new version of your video, just come across to share and you can save that out. Now for those of you that are using Adobe Premiere as well, you can easily transfer this Rush project over into Adobe Premiere if you've got it enabled and set up to be synced to the Adobe Cloud. So if we go back over to the Home button here, press the three little buttons, you will wanna make sure that you've got Sync turned on for this. It's gonna go ahead and upload your projects to the cloud. And then over in Adobe Premiere Pro on your Mac or PC, you've got this little button here, Open Premiere Rush Project. If you select on that one, then you get to choose your synchronized Rush project. So if we select on this one now, just an edit, it's gonna go ahead and it's going to open up that exact same timeline for us now to edit in Adobe Premiere. So another super powerful feature. So that's a complete walkthrough in Adobe Premiere Rush. So now it's your turn. Make sure to grab your copy of the Primal Video Method, which you can use as a checklist next time you're editing to follow along with the exact process that we just used for this walkthrough. Just click the link on screen now to download your copy. It is packed full of tips to save you a ton of time and rework when you're editing next.